Hello friends, I am Dr. Ashish. Welcome to my channel Live Biochemistry. In this video, we will discuss about the chemistry of lipids part 2 and in this we will discuss about the properties of the fatty acids. Okay. There are mainly two types of properties. One is physical properties and one is chemical properties. So first, we will discuss about the physical properties of the fatty acids. So in that, there is a melting point and solubility. So what do you mean by the melting point? It is a temperature at which fats are converted from solid state to the liquid state as this saturated fatty acids, saturated fatty acids, okay, which are mainly present in the animal fat. Okay. These saturated fatty acids are solid in nature. So this saturated fatty acid has a higher melting point while the unsaturated fatty acid which are mainly present in the vegetable soils okay, and they are liquid in nature. So the unsaturated fatty acid has a lower melting point. One more important point to note down that this melting point increases with the increase in hydrocarbon chain length. So as, as compared to the palmitic acid, stearic acid has a more carbon. So static acid melting point is higher as compared to the palmitic acid. Now solubility is decreased with increase in the hydrocarbon chain and this solubility increase with increasing in the temperature. Coming to the isomerism of the fatty acids, so naturally occurring fatty acids okay, which are present in the vegetable oil that is unsaturated fatty acid, they are cis in nature. Okay. Now coming to the chemical properties of the fatty acid, it includes the hydrolysis, saponification, rancidity, oxidation, hydrogenation, halogenation, halogenation. Okay, and esterification. Okay, so we will see each of these properties one by one. So what do you mean by the hydrolysis? In hydrolysis, fats are hydrolyzed by the enzymes called as the lipase. Okay, they will bring down break down the triglyceride to fatty acid and glycerol. Then second property is saponification. Here fats react with the alkaline medium to form the sodium and potassium salts of the fatty acids, which are called as the shock. Okay, which act as a detergent, they will act as a detergent, okay. they are used in washing utensil or clothes. So this saponification means hydrolysis of the fats by the alkali. Okay. So you can see here these fats react with the sodium hydroxide to form glycerol and soap. Coming to the another property that is esterification. So here this glycerol okay, is acted by the fatty acid and they will form the esters. Okay. So this structure is called as the monoacyl glycerol, one fatty acid is attacked and H2O is removed. Most of the fats, they are in esterified in our body. Now coming to the very, very important topic that is called rancidity. What do you mean by the rancidity? It is a unpleasant, unpleasant smell order of the fatty acids or unfavorable taste of the fatty acids. So when fats are stored for the longer duration, they become rancid. Okay. They, their smell is not pleasant, their taste is not palatable. So they, they are called as a rancidity. This rancidity is caused by the growth of the microorganism that will secrete the enzyme like lipase and they will break down the fat into the glycerol and this free fatty acid and this free fatty acid they are converted to different products like peroxides or aldehydes and they will give a unpleasant order. So because of the hydrolytic enzyme secreted this type of rancidity it is called as the hydrolytic rancidity. Another type of rancidity is oxidative rancidity where mostly the unsaturated fatty acids when they are exposed to the atmospheric oxygen Okay, they will be converted to the fatty acid aldehyde and peroxy peroxides and they become the rancid. So taste and smell, smell is changed in the fat. Okay, and because unsaturated fatty acids, okay, these unsaturated fatty acids are present in the vegetable oil like sunflower or safflower oil. So in nature, okay, this vegetable, okay, they are prone to the oxygen. So there is more chance of rancidity can occur in them. So to prevent them, this vegetable oil has a natural antioxidant in it, that is the vitamin E. So we will see in vitamin video that vitamin E, the good source is vegetable oils like sunflower oil, sunflower oil. So nature has given good amount of vitamin E in this vegetable to prevent the rancidity. Okay. So if I revise again, the rancidity types hydrolytic and oxidative. Hydrolytic rancidity is hydrolysis of triglyceride by the bacterial enzyme which will secrete the lipase and break down the triglyceride to glycerol and fatty acid that will impart the rancidity and oxidative rancidity is oxidation of fat leading to formation of peroxide and corresponding aldehyde which is prevented by the antioxidants. In hydrogenation, what do you mean by hydrogenation? The unsaturated fatty acid which has a double bond, okay, they have a double bond, they will accept the hydrogen. 
so in presence of hydrogen this unsaturated fatty acid they are converted to saturated fatty acid they will take up the hydrogen so no double bond will be remaining okay the commercially this hydrogenation is used to convert the liquid fats okay liquid fats are mainly the unsaturated fatty acids okay this unsaturated fatty acids okay they will be converted to solid cooking fats with the help of hydrogenation the example is vanaspati ghee or it is called as a dalda okay so you can see here this is a you can see a double bond so this is a unsaturated fatty acid they will accept the hydrogen okay and they will be converted to saturated fatty acids okay so some facts about this fatty acid is irrespective of the source fat is the most concentrated form of the dietary energy there is no such thing like low caloric fat okay if the person wish to reduce the weight he only rule is to eat less and exercise more the polyunsaturated fatty acid they are more superior okay because they are cis in nature right so they will provide there is a band tucker and it is good for the fluidity of the cell membrane okay so polyunsaturated fatty acid are superior the fats of the animal origin like palmitic acid sedic acid okay they are saturated okay while vegetable oils will be unsaturated the only example where animal origin can be unsaturated is fish oil okay then another property is halogenation okay so unsaturated fatty acids okay they will take up the iodine so this uh, amount of hydrogen that is taken by the fatty acid is depend on the double bond and degree of unsaturation so there is one terminology called as a iodine number which is defined as number of gram of iodine taken up by the 100 gram of fat number of gram of iodine taken up by the 100 gram of fat it is useful to know the relative unsaturation of the fat it is directly proportionate to the content of the unsaturated fatty acid lower the iodine number lower will be the unsaturation so it is defined as the number of grams of iodine taken up by the 100 grams of the fat okay it is directly proportionate to the degree of unsaturation it is used to detect the degree of unsaturation and to detect the adulteration okay suppose you can see this is a sunflower oil which is unsaturated fatty acid so it has a higher iodine number as compared to butter and coconut oil which has a more of saturated fatty acid okay then one more terminology is saponification number it is defined as the number of milligram of potassium hydroxide required to saponify one gram of fat in iodine number it is the number of gram of iodine taken up by the 100 gram of fat okay while in saponification number it is a milligram of koh okay, required to saponify one gram of fat okay it is inversely proportionate to the molecular weight okay so lower the molecular weight higher the saponification number it is used to detect the molecular weight of the fatty acid as well as well as to know the adulteration or mixing okay so this is all about the today's lecture so we have seen about the physical property like melting point solubility okay and isomerism then chemical property we have seen about the hydrolysis hydrolysis esterification saponification hydrogenation halogenation okay and density so this is all about the physical property and chemical property of the fatty acid or in term the properties of the fatty acid i hope this video is useful to you if you like this video please hit the like button share this video to your friends subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you can get notification for my future video also thank you friends for watching bye